you're making a movie in that's alternately in the streets of New York and in very closed quarters and with hallways and things and that you decide I'm going to make it look like it was all in one shot. Um, were you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good yes. question. Yes. <laughs> I, I think, I, well, I think you, to make films you have to be a little cuckoo. I, I always said that. If you don't have that factor, I think you're in trouble, I guess. But, uh, but uh, honestly, um, for me, um, it was uh, the only way I could have done this film since I got the idea of this project. I knew that that was a deal, and not only as a personal challenge, as a storytelling, that I knew that it was involved and excited me, obviously, but um, I knew that... Um, it's a film that speaks about that voice that we all have, which always contradict what what we sometimes pretend or, or kind of shake us or trying to challenge us uh, or judge us. Or so that is the ego that, in a way, is a very internal process that uh, that challenges in every level. And uh, and I knew that to tell a story about such an internal, intellectual concept about our own inner voice, um, I knew that I had to have uh, a point of view inside the character in order to navigate emotional to him. So I think the way this was shot was a decision of the best way to tell this story, and that thing became an extension of the, of the emotional state of the character in order for the audiences experience that. And, and, and that was the base of the decision. And then the tough part was to, to do it. Right, Michael? Yeah. yeah, I mean, Michael, did you have any idea what you were really in for? Uh, yes and no. Uh, he kept saying to me, he would look at me and say, you know how, you know this is going to be difficult and you're going to go very deep. And honestly, I did know, but I always say there's like two or three no's, K-N-O-W. There's the no where, you know, we all kind of know things, you know, you get up and you go, yeah, I know what this is. And then there's a deeper no where you go, whoa, I really, now I know something. I got a lot of that about week to actually in rehearsal. So I, I did understand. I don't think Alejandro actually thought I was really getting it. I really was getting it, but not at the level at which I needed to get it. So uh, listening to Alejandro speak, uh, so, so it really started to hit me, us, I think. We all knew, you know, we were into something pretty cool and something kind of risky, and the rehearsal really started to uh, prove that and then the shooting by the time we got the shooting honestly I think we all knew we were in a war you know we were deep entrenched in this thing but when I listened to him speak I, at first when I, I don't know maybe 10 days in I'm looking around I'm sitting on the set and I'm thinking why, why are we shooting this movie like this and and then as you and then after you keep doing it and keep doing it, and then once I saw it there isn't any other way to do this there isn't a there's no other way to, and, it, and it's not, I, I almost hate when people focus on the long shot thing because that's that much of it. That's that much of it. It, 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 it. You can't tell the story any other way. I don't think you can tell any other story because it's a ride, you know, and I, and I know that's true because I listen to people come up to me on the street who are not in the, not in the business, just people in the street who want to say things to me about the movie and about a particular scene, and they're so articulate about it and so specific about things that I don't think they would feel those things if they didn't go, go, go inside his, Riggins' head and into the movie and into the experience. I, I, don't think, I don't think they'd be moved like that if you just sh shoot it. I think it would be a good movie, but I don't think it would work the same way. 